I start now. Hello. I'm JD and I'm calling you, talking to you right now because basically I'm going to need your help. I've started it in Den Denver, which is a new adventure probably or something that everyone's telling me impossible. Basically, I'm saying that a person who is not part of a political party can run for president. We need your help. But before you decide to help or you, before you turn me off, first go to myspace.com JDC backslash JDC48. Again, myspace.com backslash JDC48. Read what I've written in there and read my blog. Then you can email me via jcriveau at aol.com. Again, J C R I V E A U at AOL dot com. Quickly, are you satisfied with these candidates we have right now for president? Do you think they are the men who can do the job that this country needs? Do you feel they have the leadership quality? Do you feel they have vision? Do you feel they have foresight? Do you feel that they have direction? If you say yes, Ignore me for the next several nights because I'm going to come on because this is limited to 10 minutes and I'm going to limit myself to 8 minutes each time so that I can talk to you. Then don't listen to me. But if you feel that these people that are running, that are senators, and that's where they belong, not as president, then listen to me. Look at what they promise you. Listen to what they say. Obama, change, change, change. But he's just a marionette, a puppet. The Democratic Party is the control, pulling his strings. Listen to his words. Do they sound familiar? Did you hear them before? The Speaker of the House, she said the same thing just a couple weeks ago. Exactly the same thing as what he's saying now. Is that change? Repeating the Democratic platform? Are we that happy with Congress? We want to put somebody? Oh, I guess that is change for him because, see, he's a senator, not a congressman. So I guess that's his change. Because it's nothing else. He has no change he's offering us. He's offering us the same old Democratic rig rigmarole. The same old Democratic garbage. McCain, listen to him. What he says. He's going to give $300 million to the person who produces a battery. Where's he going to get that $300 million? Congress and the Senate. Not the President. That's a false promise. He can't back that up. Only Congress and the Senate can. Like everything else he promises. Nope. Neither one of them has vision. Neither one of them has foresight. Neither one of them has direction. Neither one of them has any leadership capabilities. I will admit that McCain has some management capabilities, but no leadership capabilities. He's a good man to have on a team, but not as the leader, because he can't see the problems down the road. If he could, he would have been arguing a long time ago about drilling and getting us new oil. 24 years ago, under Jimmy Carter, we seen this coming. But did he do anything about it? No. For the past several years. We've had these oil problems. Did Obama do anything about it? No. Look at the other promises. Free medical. Oh, there's nothing free. You think that it's expensive now? Let him take care of it. Let him charge you more. He's going to give you more taxes so that he can give you a medical program. I say, yeah, that's great. Give me a medical program as long as it's less than $200 a month. Because that's what I'm paying. Well, actually, I'm paying $300 a month. And I can't even afford to buy a pair of glasses. They give me $100. I have to go to Dollar Tree to get my reading glasses. They're okay. They're close. Because I'm diabetic, I have to get my eyes checked every year. And they're close to what I need anyway. <laughs> so, no, there's nothing free. There's no change there. Both, they're, they're not leaders. 
They're okay for senators. No, they're not even okay because our Senate and Congress is totally non-functional. Our government is not functioning. There's a lot of things wrong and it needs to be corrected. Each night I'm going to talk about a different aspect. Each night I'm going to talk about a different promise that they promise. How do they plan on delivering? How do they plan on getting us out of the, this oil crisis? Suing OPEC? Because you see them going to court? Oh, standing in world court. Say, okay, OPEC should be producing more oil. OPEC turns around and looks at the world judges and says, let's look at the United States. Are they producing oil on the East Coast? No. Are they producing oil on the West Coast? No. How about around Florida? No. Have they done any new wells in contact with the United States? Very little. Have they done anything in Alaska? Oh, they limit that. Oh, what is it? Oh, ecology, world ecology. Oh, so because they're not producing the oil, because they help the United States to cause the deficit, we, OPEC, have to pick it up? We have to pick up the slack that they're not producing? Congress, tell me this. Why aren't we the number one oil producing nation in the world? Do you realize the revenue you get from that oil could be used to replace the money that has been taken out of Social Security by Congress and the Senate for other things? Social Security and could be sovereign for the next hundred years if you just took the revenue, 80% of the revenue that you would get from new wells now and put it back into Social Security. I'm talking about the ta taxes and stuff. Medical. They're coming with all these plans. We have an outstanding medical program. We just need to explain it to the people and the hospitals. Every single hospital should have a free clinic. That's right. Every single hospital should have a clinic. Not necessarily completely free, 5 or $10. And there, anybody in the United States can go to. Not just an American citizen, but anybody who needs medical help. It'll take off the load on the emergency room. Let's say from 6 to 10 at night, the clinic's open. From 10 to 6 in the morning, the clinic and emergency room combined at the hospital. <clears throat> Your interns spend the first two years working in the clinic. That's where they'll develop their patient-doctor relationship and a lot of other things. There's a lot more to be done and a lot can be done. But first, we need to maximize our own resources. First, we need to look at what we have and use it to the best of our abilities. Not ignore it, not turn our back on it, but develop it. And when you talk about getting us off of oil, the electric car is not the answer. Why? Because it's still using oil to run sometimes. Well, if we get a better battery, no, 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 no. Why don't we just simply go to a hydrogen car? Oh, we can't do that because we've got to think of the ecology, the atmosphere. I mean, a hydrogen, when you burn that with oxygen, it produces H2O, uh, you know, water. Yeah, we can't have that because today, with today's guys, we got catalytic converters. Catalytic converters wouldn't be needed then. And I mean, what is catalytic converter? I mean, they change the exhaust in a car to sulfur dioxide mixed with water, produces sulfuric acid. Now, which one is going to hurt the tree? Sulfuric acid or water? Oh, the tree can't stand the water, but oh, love that sulfuric acid on it, right? Yes, that's the way our Congress works. They work with quick fixes that accomplish nothing. They don't do the job right. They never have in the past 30 years. Our Congress and Senate has done nothing but looked for shortcuts to do a job. Never once trying to do it right. That's too hard. How much time I got left? Oh.